in today's show. It's a big one. We had 11 games on Wednesday. Let's talk about them now. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. This episode of Locked On Fantasy Basketball is brought to you by McDonald's. Proudly serving communities since 1965, McDonald's has always been more than just a place to get tasty, affordable food. It's an unofficial community center. A big thank you to our friends at McDonald's for always being there. I'm loving it. Thank you for also making the Locked On Fantasy Basketball podcast your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. All right, lot to talk about. Let's get stuck in and hit the news straight off the bat. Cade Cunningham is going to miss the Pistons road trip. I don't like how secretive they're being about this uh, about this bullshit. Um, it's a little worrisome. The fact that uh, you know he didn't play preseason, they missed the opener, now he's missing the road trip. I'm worried. I'm not dropping him, of course, but I'm a little bit concerned about this absence so far for Cade. It'd be great to be able to see him out on the court, Unfortunately, we're just not getting that at this point, which is, again, it's a little bit disappointing to be in this position, I think. Um, the Clippers are apparently going to be limiting their minutes of some players, including Marcus Morris was the main one they mentioned because they haven't played a game in nine days. Now, we have saw some bullshit from coaches on Wednesday. Well, we're going to limit their minutes, and then we play them 78 minutes. So, you know, don't read too much into that, but be aware of it. You know, Gordon Haywood, he's going to be limited. Jalen Brown, no, oh, they're coming back from COVID. They're going to be limited. It was clearly a crock of shit. So I don't know what they mean or how this is going to impact Marcus Morris, but just be aware that they did say that. Whether they abide by that is still anyone's guess. But that's something to look at. And then for the Hawks, Daniel Gallinari and Lou Williams are both questionable, which would boost the value of Herder and Delon Wright and uh, Cam Reddish, DeAndre Hunter, John Collins. All those guys would get a bump if those veterans did happen to miss. That's probably the big news that's not actual gameplay related from um, from the action from uh, Wednesday. So this is how we're going to approach these yeah, re- recap shows now, I think, is that we do this, we do the news, then we look at the top ads over the last 24 hours and the top drops, and then we get into the recaps, and then we talk about the best performance for the day. So the top ads over the last 24-hour um, period, basically since you know, the games were yesterday, Nemanja Bielitsa, the number one ad, plus 5.3%. Now, it's great to add him, especially with the Warriors playing on that low volume Thursday. I have my doubts whether he can maintain that level of value, but he's okay as an ad. Tyrese Maxey with the uh, Simmons situation going south pretty quickly. Yeah, I'd be looking to add him in all 12 team leagues. Nick Claxton up 2.3%. I'm not convinced on that one. That's probably more of a 14 uh, team league scenario. He does have a nice schedule for the week, but I'm not... Uh, you know, with another low volume game coming up, I'm not 100% convinced on that. With Claxo to be a must roster 12er, same with Pat Mills, who's not going to shoot 100% from three. He can be an interesting streamer, but that's probably more 14, 16 team leagues than 12 team situations. While well, Goran Dragic, I guess people added him after they heard that he was starting today. Um, I was always, well, not always, I was expecting him to start over the last week or so. Um, doesn't mean that I want to add him, and, and I don't think that Dragic is a must roster twelve team league guy. So I think people who have been um, who have been adding him are probably probably in the wrong there. Um, let's have a look at the top drops. Lamarcus Aldridge down five point three percent, as Jack Armstrong would say. Get that garbage out of here. Otto Porter down four and four point eight percent. You can drop him as well. Marvin Bagley down 4.4%. I can't believe he was rostered in that many leagues to begin with. He is a pretty clear drop too. Well, interestingly, I don't know why people are dropping Will Barton. I'm still holding Will Barton uh, in 12-team leagues. I don't know why they were dropping him before his game even played. And then John Wall. Did people think that John Wall was playing and then saw the Rockets and went, oh no, he's not there? I don't know what that's about. He shouldn't really have been drafted in any 12-team formats. So yeah, I agree with four of those five top drops over the last 24 hours, not really agreeing there with the um, with the Will Barton situation at this point. But that does bring me to the point of the show where I've got to say thank you to McDonald's. 
It's great to have McDonald's on board sponsoring this show. McDonald's has been proudly serving communities since 1965, and it's always been more than just a place to get tasty and affordable food. We all have memories of Maccas from our childhood, going there for birthday parties, coming back from participating in sports. And now, as you're older, maybe you have kids and you have those memories of taking your kids to McDonald's. I remember coming back after your cricket games and getting in there to McDonald's, getting my little nugget six-pack or nine-pack or 20-pack, depending on how old I was, and seeing other kids who have been playing sports, some that I know from my team, others from school. You always, it's like a little community center, getting people together uh, and just being, knowing that Maccas is there. It's always a part of your community. It's, you see, again, we all have that memory. Every single person, I reckon, listening to this podcast has that memory of McDonald's from their childhood. So head to your local McDonald's to refuel and reconnect. Guys, da-da-da-da-da, I'm loving it. Yeah, there it is. Get used to me singing that uh, that tune completely um <laughs> completely out of out of key. So, now it is time for me to get into this part of the show where we talk game recaps. People complained yesterday that the sound of the of the transition was um was too loud on the recap, so I've taken it off. That's fine. We make adjustments if that was too loud for you, it's too loud for you. Let's talk about the games. What a wild one. Indiana and Charlotte. 123 Charlotte, 122 Indiana. Indiana was up huge. Charlotte came back and they squeak one out. There was some wild rotation decisions right across the NBA. And this is one of them. Carlisle goes with an eight-man rotation. I guess he only has eight players he trusts because Levert and Warren are out. So he goes, all right, we just won't replace them in the rotation. So 40 minutes for Malcolm Brogdon. That's crazy. 28 points, 11 assists. He shot 40% from the field, which is shit. But nine of nine from the line is good. I'm not certain that Malcolm Brogdon can withstand 40 minutes a night. But it was interesting to see him play 40 and Sabonis play 39. Sabonis was on fire early. He did cool off, but ended with 33 and 15. But my concern, I guess, with Sabonis was you know, lack of defensive stats, which are non-existent here, 0 and 0. And he had no assists. And he did this on 68% shooting. So there's going to be somewhat of a drop-off. So I was not as high on Sabonis heading into the season. Some people were taking him as a fringe first-round guy, early second-round guy. To me, he was more of a late second-round player. If you want to, I, I would look at that and go, yeah, that sort of efficiency and those sort of minutes have no way of continuing. Maybe you want to trade, see if anyone buys into him as a top 13, top 12 player. That's what I'd look at. But am I burying the lead? Chris Duarte. Opportunity was massive for him with Warren and Levert out, and he took full advantage. Much like Sabonis, we don't expect this shooting, 60% to continue. 27 and 5 with six threes is excellent. I would have hoped for more assists and more defensive stats. I think he can still bring more defensive stats, and he absolutely is a 12-team league guy for the short term, right? For the short term, for sure. But that level of shooting with 33 minutes is probably not going to be a continual thing for him. I don't know when Warren's coming back. That might be months away. But even adding Levert to the mix just has somewhat of an impact on Duarte. McConnell only played 24 minutes. I was was worried that Carlisle wouldn't like McConnell as much as what Bjorkren did. And in a game where everyone's playing big minutes, for him to only get 24 when he averaged 26 or 27 last year is a little bit of a concern. The seven assists, one steal, and two blocks is nice for TJ. But to me, he's more of a specialist. While Miles Turner blocked a lot of shots, he blocked four of them, two in the first two minutes. But otherwise, it was pretty putrid. 9.7 rebounds in 26 minutes. Lamb and Craig and Holiday all got you know, 25 plus minutes. Um, they didn't do too much with those uh, with that playing time. Now for the Hornets, Lamelo only 29 minutes for Lamelo, which is annoying. But holy shit, 31, nine and seven, seven threes, two steals, 48 percent shooting, excellent stuff. That's 56 fantasy points for Lamelo Ball as well. While Miles Bridges started out pretty slow, but ended with 13 and eight, minuscule usage, but three steals, a block, four assists. He worked his way in, and he started as expected in 33 minutes. What I didn't expect was for PJ Washington Jr. to play only 19 minutes. Five points on 14% shooting is dreadful. I'm still holding him, but I did not expect to see 19 minutes for PJ and 32 minutes for Mason Plumley. Now, Plumley should be rostered in all 12 team leagues. Eight, 10, and five is not great. Missing all three of your free, sh- throw- free throws is dreadful, but playing 33 minutes, I expect that field goal percentage to go up. He should be on a roster. They also played Jalen McDaniels over James Booknight, so keep that in mind. Only one point for 11 minutes. For um, 
Uh, McDaniels, he's not really an option, but yeah, book night out of the rotation. While Smith had four, to, Smith fourteen points in twenty one minutes, and Gordon Hayward, who allegedly was limited due to COVID, had twenty seven five and three with two threes. And it would have been much better if he didn't shoot sixty three from the line. So really good numbers from Hayward there, who was amazingly going outside the top one hundred on ESPN. Good value for him. Cody Martin, ten and six. He's always going to be trusted by Borrego, and we saw that. Um, we saw that trust in this one right here. So let's go on to the next game. We are looking at the Chicago Bulls. They are up against the, or well, they were up against the Detroit Pistons. Uh, yeah, this was, okay, how, I can't believe how low scoring this game was. For a team with no defense like Chicago to you know, have a 94-88 win, it was bad. But Levine was great. 34-7-4 with a triple one. Excellent efficiency, high usage, great stuff. While uh, Nikola Vucevic... It's Vucevic. It's Vucevic. 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 You're happy to see his usage that high at 29%. Efficiency was horrible. Took 21 shots, most on the team. But, of course, didn't get to the free throw line at all. He never does. 15 and 15 with four assists and no defensive stats. I would say that people that took him early second round would be pretty disappointed. That wasn't the area I thought you should have been taking him. But he will settle in with better efficiency. It's just encouraging to see those minutes. But more importantly, that high level of shot attempts. I'm not sure that sticks necessarily. Lonzo had 12, 6, and 4 with a block. Yeah, he can be better. While DeRozan, 17 and 7 with 3 steals. So DeRozan's the guy that took that step back in usage while Vooch and Levine kept it high. Pat Williams is just never going to touch it. 6 points in 28 minutes. Didn't close the game. That was Alex Caruso's role. Caruso ended up with 4 steals and 2 blocks, but only 3 points. Now, that level of defensive um, stat accumulation isn't something that is going to happen every game. He can be a streamer, but I'm not looking at him as a 12-team league guy. Well, I don't think you need to consider Pat Williams a must-roster 12-team league guy. They played Alizé Johnson over Derek Jones Jr. as well. Well, Troy Brown apparently had some sort of mouth problem, but that wasn't why he was out. They just wanted to see what Ayo Desumno could do, and he was all right. Seven points in 11 minutes, but I wouldn't be getting too excited there. For the Pistons, no Cade Cunningham, so we had big usage Jeremy Grant again. We had poor efficiency Jeremy Grant, but we had big usage Jeremy Grant. 24 and 6 with three threes, a steal, and a block. He won't maintain that level, I don't think, when Cade returns. While Alf Stewart, big Isaiah. Is that you, Mr. Stewart? Well, who the hell else do you think it'd be? Get in here, you pair of flaming galahs. Disappointed to only see 26 minutes from Stewart, especially with no no foul trouble. 12 and 8 with a block is fine. There's more to come there. While well, the depressed penis had 13, 9, and 4 in 33 minutes. That to me is just really stock standard Sadiq Bay. Um, Frank Jackson started in place of Cade. He does nothing apart from score, and he couldn't score here. He is not an ad outside of the very, very deepest of leagues. Well, Hamadou Diallo got a rotation role, as did Josh Jackson, but nothing exciting. And Corey Joseph played, again, too many minutes. 28 minutes with two steals and a block. He's an interesting, um, like, 16-team league option, given the uh, proclivities of his coach. 22 points, sorry, 22 minutes for Kelly Olenek with 10 points is fine. I'm still holding, but let's talk Killian Hayes. He was bad again. I'm not. I like the bloke coming into the draft. No denying that. I was pretty excited by him coming into the draft. He has been shit house in nearly every game. O of six from the field is bad. Zero points. You t- took him with the last pick in your draft. You hoped it was a flyer. It didn't work out. Drop him if you want to drop him. Drop him. I don't think there's. If I had him, I don't even know if I've got him in any drafts. But if I did, I see you later. Like I'll, I'll get someone else. The upside is not high enough for me to you know, persist with this piss poor bullshit. And that's without Cade. And obviously, Case is just going, we're going to play Corey Joseph. He just looks terrible. I'm not writing him off as an NBA player, but I'm happily dropping him in uh, in fantasy leagues at this stage. All right, let's go to the next one. It is the Wizards and the Raptors. How disappointing is this for the Raptors to be at home and to get absolutely ass-kicked by the Wizards, 98-83. It was worse than this early on as well. Just horrendous. Beal was fine. 23, 3, and 4 with four steals. Poor efficiency, but yeah, fine. Daniel Gafford played 22 minutes. Sort of the expectation that we had for him. Eight points, five rebounds, but two steals and four blocks. Great. Montrez Harrell, the table, 22 and 9 with a block in 26 minutes. Again, about the same expectation we had. 82% shooting for Harrell is not going to continue. I don't know what they do when Tom Bryant comes back. Maybe they just don't play Bryant and Gafford and Harrell fill that role. There was no Rui Hachimura, so Kyle Kuzma started. He played 35 minutes, and he was Kyle Kuzma. The 15 rebounds is a gigantic hour. Ah, in fact, Sheev, what is it? A surprise, to be sure, but a welcome one. 
But 11 points on 31% is rough. At least he had a steal and a block. If you want to have him short-term while Rui is out, and I think Rui is going to miss next game as well, that's fine. I just don't see Kuzma as any sort of high-priority 12-team league play. He's rostered in tons of leagues. Good to see some nice performances from Denny Avdia. He had two steals and two blocks with eight and seven in 21 minutes. But of course, Hachimura probably cuts in there. While I am not convinced that Davis Bertans remains in the rotation. Not a 12-team league guy. Piss him right off out of there. Not a 14-team league guy. Zero points and only 13 minutes. While KCP had five points in 27 minutes. Now, on to the Raptors. Let's talk about OG Ananobi. But what about Scarf? OG. Balenciaga stop, ones. OG. Uh, you better stop, OG. Now, obviously, 18% is horrendous shooting and it won't continue. I'm most encouraged by the fact that he had 34 minutes with 25 usage. 11 points, 10 boards, two threes, two steals, one block. Just hold still. Or hold tight on him. Van Vliet, also shit shooting. 12 points on 25%. That's rough. Yeah, but four assists, two steals, and a block, and the minutes, it's all fine. Um, Scotty Barnes led the team in scoring somehow. Don't know how he didn't have, you know, all these, he was getting all these assists and all these steals and all these blocks, and he had one assist, one steal, zero blocks. So that's not why we roster Scotty Barnes. As expected, bad free throws, bad field goals. For now, he is a 12-team league guy. I am not convinced in any manner, as I've said plenty of times, that he remains a 12-team league player. There are too many holes in his game. The lack of threes, the lack of field goal percentage, the lack of free throw percentage, which showed up here. And if he's not going to be handling the ball, then what the hell are we doing? You know, if he's not getting assists, there's no point. I still hold for now. Draft presses Achua in the last round. See how the minutes shake out. Boucher coming back complicates that. Drop pressures Achua. Played 19 minutes, had 6 and 7. Boucher had 18 minutes for 7 and 4. I think it's going to be a mess for Boucher all season. And I, I would hold maybe for a few more. And he'll be up and down. I do not think that uh, Chris Boucher is going to maintain 12-team league value. Achua, Birch, Barnes... Siakam, all these guys. There's just too many there for him to get 23 minutes a night, I believe. It's good to see him playing, but I just don't see it. Well, Gary Trent, I know if um, Jared Johnson's listening to this, he's not going to like it, but Gary Trent. Get that garbage out of here! He's just no good. Six points on 22% shooting coming off the bench. I didn't I didn't think he was a draftable player anyway for category leagues. Points leagues, I might, I'd might hold. In category leagues, I wouldn't have drafted him to begin with, so I'm more than happy to drop him. While Dragic played 22 minutes, had 9, 3, and 4, he's not worth it as a 12-team league guy, as I mentioned earlier. Ken Birch gets most of the center minutes, but it's not enough to give a shit about in 12-team leagues. 9 and 9 in 26 minutes. Yeah, Birch, Achua, not 12-team guys. Boucher, probably not either. That's your extent of the minutes there. If you want a deeper league, add Delano Banton. He played over Flynn. He looked better than Mahaluk. He had seven and four with a three. Oh, I didn't think he was a particularly good prospect coming in, but he's impressed me in this game. And he looked all right in the preseason. Happy to admit when I'm wrong and stuff. I've got no problem with that. I'm not saying he's going to have any impact in 12 or 14 or 16 team leagues, but deeper leagues, uh, he's going to have some sort of impact. I think we can, uh, I think we can feel pretty confident uh, about that at this stage. All right, guys. LeBron James. Why is he the king? Well, one of the things, apart from being an absolute freak athlete, is sleep. Sleep is super important. And Calm, Calm, Calm. Calm is the number one app for sleep and meditation. Calm has teamed up with LeBron James to help you activate the power of sleep. LeBron and Calm know that your mind is just like any other muscle in your body, but you don't have to be a world champion to learn how to train it. Calm can help you train your brain so you sleep better, reduce your stress and perform at your best, just like King James. hate that name. Jesus, terrible. As he says, Getting good sleep and finding time to rest is one of the most valuable things I can do for my body and mind. From the sound of rain falling on leaves to bedtime sleep stories, Calm puts me to sleep within minutes, which means I wake up ready for any challenge. So head to calm.com slash locked on NBA. For a limited time, you'll get 40% off a Calm premium subscription. Again, for a limited time, our listeners can join LeBron in using Calm and get a 40% discount on a Calm premium subscription at calm.com slash locked on NBA. Unlock content to help you focus, ease stress, and sleep better. Get started at calm.com slash locked on NBA. That's calm.com slash locked on NBA. Guys, you might be sweaty. You might have to deal with excessive sweat. You might have to worry about what shirt you're wearing or what you're doing when you're out playing sport because you're just sweating through your clothes and it's gross. No one wants to have to deal with that problem. We don't have to anymore. Because sleep block, sweet, not sleep block, sweat block is here. Sweat block is the doctor created and doctor recommended formula to help reduce excessive sweating. 
I love using it. We all love using it here in this family. It's great, especially as we head into summer to try and reduce that issue of Dr. Sw- uh, Dr. Sweating. It's Dr. Created of excessive sweating. Sweat block wipes work for up to seven days as well. You put them on before you go to bed, wipe under your arms or wherever else you might sweat, your chest, your back, your feet, your hands. You can use it anywhere, literally anywhere. And I think you know what I mean. I mean on your balls. There you go. Um, it works for up to seven days. Put it on at night, wake up the next morning, have a wash and you're off and you're ready to go. There's also the dry shirt guarantee. If sweat block doesn't keep you dry, you get your money back. Get some sweat block at sweatblock.com by using the promo code Locked On, saving 20% there or at Amazon or CBS. Let's look at the next game of the day. The Boston Celtics and the New York Knicks. Wow. What a, uh, what a huge game that was. Double overtime. The Knicks win it 138-134. Jalen Brown, coming back from COVID. Oh, we're going to put him in the small stints. We're going to limit him. Well, he played 46 minutes and scored 46 points with eight triples, nine rebounds, six assists, three steals, and a block. An absolute monster from Jalen Brown. Ime Yudoka played an eight-man rotation, sorry, a nine-man rotation in a double overtime game. Some coaches just going hard. They just do not give a shit. They do not care. Whew. Rob Williams. Um, yeah, all right. The Rock DJ. Uh, yeah, this is uh, this is top 20 fantasy stuff here. 16 and 10, three steals and five blocks. Yes, Al Horford was out. But all we said, if he gets 25 minutes, he'll be your top 50. If he gets 30, he'll be top 20. If he gets 45 minutes, holy crap. You know, people were... Let's get this one out of the way now. If you've got Ennis Cantor rostered, drop him. There was no Al Horford and it was double overtime and he didn't play at all. You can drop Ennis Cantor comfortably. Right, so Horford will have an impact. But they played 31 minutes of Grant Williams. There's 31 minutes right there for Al Horford to get. Rob Williams is playing 25 plus. Easy, easy every night. Maybe 27 plus. It's going to be awesome. Marcus Smart, 15, 8, and 6 with five threes. Well, Williams himself, a guy who I did like in the draft and have been disappointed in his first two years. He had 15, 5, and 4 with three threes, a steal, and a block. That's really fantasy relevant. Now, with Horford back, I don't know what they do, but he's probably going to find a 24-minute night a night roll coming off the bench. Tatum was bad, let's be honest. 20 and 11 on 30 shot attempts is terrible. That is just way too many shots when you're not feeling it. At least he had a steal on a block, but you know, he'll be better. While Schroeder had 12, 3, and 8. I don't believe that Dennis Schroeder is a 12-team league guy, but he did play 32 minutes, although it is double overtime. And it's interesting to see 23 minutes of Romeo Langford, just 11 of Pritchard, and 11 of Neesmith. Didn't expect that minutes distribution. Now, there was no Josh Richardson also. And we're not looking at Pritchard or Langford or Neesmith as any 12-team league guys, but probably not even 14-team league guys. Interesting to see how much Udoka limited Pritchard in um, comparison to how much he played under uh, Brad Stevens last year. For the Knicks, the double royal, Julius Randle. I was worried about what the assist would be like. I guess not. 35, 8, and 9 in 46 minutes with three blocks. That is a huge game. While Evan Fournier, who was dreadful in preseason, blew up. 32 points, 6 triples, 6 rebounds, 4 steals, and a block in 44 minutes. Rowan Barrett went scoreless for like the first three quarters, and he ended with 19 in 47 minutes with three threes and two blocks. While Mitch Robinson, did he take it from here? And Mitch Robinson says, I'll take it from here. Yeah, pretty much. 11 and 17 with two blocks. Make sure Mitch Robinson isn't available on your waiver wire. Nerlens Noel and Taj Gibson were both out, but he's going to play 28 plus, maybe 30 a night. Kemba didn't look great. I'm still holding him, of course. 10, 8, and 3 with three threes. Well, Obi Toppin filled in for that Taj Gibson and Nerlens Noel absence and did pretty well. I was impressed with Obi. And I've been really critical of that pick and of his first season, but he was good here. 14 and 5, he's super fast, super athletic. I just worry about will there be any role for him when uh, Nerlens comes back, and I'm not sure about that. Well, Emmanuel quickly, eight minutes. Again, it's impossible. For, it was always going to be impossible to get enough minutes to be impactful enough this season with Kemba, with Rose, with Fournier, with Burks. I didn't expect only eight minutes in a double overtime game. Tibbs strikes again. Of course, you can drop quickly in any 12 or 14, probably even in any 16 team league that you've got him in. It's just going to be impossible, I think, for him to get enough minutes to um, uh, to be relevant enough to use in on most nights anyway. Let's look at the next one. It is the Cavs. They took on the Memphis Grizzlies, and Memphis wins at 132-121. Now, Cleveland made an absolutely ridiculous starting lineup decision. They decided they were going to start Larry Markin and bring Isaac Okoro off the bench. Why? 
I have no idea. Oh, we need to get his shooting out there. Then make better moves. Like this, this, this is ridiculous coaching. Look, ridiculous coaching. But how good's Evan Mobley look? Thirty-eight minutes. Surely Evan Mobley is not available in any of your leagues. I did have him as um, my best value pick for rookie of the year, so I'm happy with that. 17, 9, and 6 with a triple one on 54% shooting. Absolute top 20 upside, not this season, in the future. Great debut. And it was also awesome stuff from Jarrett Allen. I was a little bit down on Allen this year, but and I'm not expecting him to be a 25-point scorer. Three steals, three blocks, 100% shooting on 11 of 11. That's really what kicks him up a notch there. But really impressive to see those two together. Markkinen, 10 points on 29 shooting is shit house. And he shouldn't be... It's, I don't get it. I'm not picking Markkinen up. He's rostered in like nearly every league, which is ridiculous. I don't think that he should be a 12-team league player. Or definitely not a must-roster 12-team league player. He can be at the end of your roster. Okoro played 21 minutes. Remember the end of last season where Okoro was getting these minutes? Man, he's going to be this huge sleeper next year. Uh, yeah, eight points in 20 minutes while Sexton was um, was not great. 17 points is fine. 54% shooting is great. One of three from the line is trash, but in true Colin Sexton style, no steals, no blocks, one rebound, one assist. That's where the problem always lies with Sexton. He will be better than this, but that was rough. While Darius Garland was also rough to start the game, but ended with 13 points and 12 assists and a really hot second half. I'm pretty big on him. Well, it was good to see ravishing Rick Rubio. Now, people harped on the words of JB Bickerstaff. He's going to play starters minutes. I didn't see how that was possible. I thought 25 was about right, and he played 25. But if he can get me 10 assists in 25 minutes, there's enough value in that. Think of him as like a TJ McConnell type to add assists and steals off your wire. If you want to add, add him, but there's no problem at all with having him for those specific numbers. But don't expect that 30 minutes a night that some people were looking at. Kevin Love, four points in 17 minutes. Their rotation outside of the Okoro for Markin and Switch went, I, I guess, pretty much as expected. For the Grizzlies, whoo, Ja Morant. Great stuff. 37 points in 34 minutes. Six rebounds, six assists. We never had any doubts that he would up his usage and be really good with assists. Never worried about that. He, again, he had no steals. He hit one three, but on a positive note, 59 from the field and hit both his free throws. So it's good. Still some worry, worrying areas. And he, I did project him to take a big step forward from last season, just not to being the top 40 player. But yeah, keep an eye on that. Desmond Bain. Sorry. Desmond. Desmond Bain. Um, 30 minutes, 22 points. He's a, he's a 12-team league guy. Yes, there was no um, Dylan Brooks here, but that's fine. While the way Paul DeAnthony Melton had 20 points in 31 minutes, four threes, four rebounds, three assists. Both of those guys are must-roster players. I have uh, Melton ahead of Bain but they're both must roster. While Kyle Anderson is not 22 minutes only without Brooks, that is not good news for him moving forward. If you need to free up... Look, if you've got the option, if you've got Anderson and Bain and Melton are there, you drop Anderson and you add one of those two guys. That's what I would do. Jaron Jackson, not great, but the four blocks is awesome. 13 and six with three threes. He only shot 25%, so we hope for a little bit more there. While Steven Adams didn't get to test the free throws out, but eight and 14 with a steal and a block. I think he's not a more of a rebounds and field goal percentage specialist, but him playing 32 minutes while Clark played 12 minutes and the cashier Xavier Tillman not playing at all was not what I expected. So keep an eye on that. Zaya Williams played 17 minutes. He didn't do too much uh, in that playing time when he was, uh, when he was there. All right. And the Minnesota Timberwolves. The Timberwolves, I think they could push for the playoffs this year. They get the easy win over Houston, 124 106. How about my boy Alperen Shengun? 12 team league guy? Yes, absolutely. 11 and 6 with three steals in 19 minutes. Surely he will get the start soon. So, surely. They said they were going to start. Well, a reporter reported that Eric Gordon was going to start. That turned out to be false. He ended up with 15 points in 23 minutes. Do not look at Eric Gordon as a 12 team league guy. Well, Christian Wood, the crucifix. Uh, the free throws, man. Why can't he hit him? I don't know, but it's consistent now. 16 and 9 for him, while Tice had 11 and 5 in 21 minutes. And I'll tell you what was shit else. Jalen Green and Kevin Porter Jr. Now, people love saying, oh, you know, want your apology for this shit. Like, Kevin Porter is not the unbelievable prospect that everyone was making him out to be. Yes, he's a must draft guy. Yes, he was completely underranked on ESPN. But he is not this good. In fact, Maybe he is actually this good of what he did today. 11, 3, and 3, 33% with you know, just some horrendous nine turnovers. Like, he's not that good. 
it was a rough night from Jalen Green as well. Now, Jalen Green will definitely be better, but as I've mentioned many times, I think that Jalen Green will be borderline unrosterable to begin the season. You still hold, much like Anthony Edwards was last year, you still hold and you hope it comes together at the end of the year. But as opposed to, say, an Evan Mobley or a Cade Cunningham, if they have you know, shooting issues, they've got other areas of their game to bring in. I'm not sure Jalen does. Now, he did have four assists and a steal. That's nice. But nine points on 29% shooting is terrible. He was in minus 37, which is gross. He was just bad. He will be better. And I am still holding him. But he'll be bad. While the wild thing, Jay Sean Tate played only 21 minutes. And that was without Daniel House. The upside on him, I reckon, is really low. So if there is someone out there that you want to grab, maybe it's his teammate, Alperen Shingun. Maybe it's Chris Duarte. Yeah, no worries. Tate's upside is not high enough to be a must-hold 12-team league player, I don't think. Now, for the Wolves, Carl anthony Towns. Yes. 30 and 10, three threes, two steals, two blocks, 73% shooting. That won't stick, but yep. This is why I liked him as a top-five pick. While Goose, Anthony Edwards. 29 points, six triples, six rebounds, one steal. Yeah, that's pretty good. D'Angelo Russell was also a guy I was high-ish high, high -ish on. He only played 25 minutes, but it was a blowout. 22, 3, and 7, a steal and a block. Pretty good night. Well, Jalen McDaniels, only four points. We worried about his lack of usage, and he had 6.3% usage, which is comically low. He had four steals and three blocks, which is awesome. But before you go and froth yourself off over it, it's got no chance of sticking. Nobody does this. And then when you fall back to four points and four rebounds, it looks dreadful. Should he be rostered in all 12 team leagues? 100%. Absolutely. But don't get carried away. They started Josh Okoge. He played 21 minutes. That's fine. Six points, five rebounds. The two steals and two blocks are nice. He can be a steal streamer, but don't overreact. While Malik Beasley, yeah, that's pretty bad. Nine points in 21 minutes. He did have two steals and two blocks as well. But if he's playing this sort of role, then he's not a 12 team league guy. I wasn't massively high on him, but even this is a letdown. Prince had five points in 16 minutes. Vanderbilt played 15 minutes. Um, we got some Balmaro minutes at the end there. But overall, an ass kicking by Minnesota with some interesting um, uh, rotation decisions. Now I've just got to have a look to see which which game this is because I'm just trying to work my system out here. I reckon it's this one. There you go. The Philadelphia 76ers. They took on the um, New Orleans Pelicans and they killed them. 117.97. It was a weird game. Tyrese Maxey, 20 and 7, 5 assists. Must roster player, got to add him. How about the big avocado, Andre Drummond? Honestly, watching him, it was humorous. Like, just the shit that he was doing, there were these weird turnovers and just looking completely lost. And then still, we have never denied his ability to put up numbers. 6 and 17 with two steals and two blocks is excellent. This was also a very, very weird game. Embiid played under 26 minutes. So if I have Andre Drummond, I would try and trade him off. But he's not going to get this every game. Like, if you believe he does, then you also believe that Furkan Korkmaz will drop in 22 points in 20 minutes. So that's how weird this game is. I'm not sure how much to take out of it. Korkmaz was great. I wasn't even sure he'd be a rotation guy. It helped that Milton was out. Now, Danny Green was putrid. He had a Tony Snell. Nothing. Right across the board. Green is absolutely not a must-roster 12-team league guy. And he's one of those guys that if you look at rankings and look at projections with turnovers on, you would look, oh my God, Dan Danny Green, man, he's top 100, top 120. You've got to roster him. This is why you don't look with turnovers. He had no turnovers here. How excited are you about it? Now, obviously, he's, he's better than this, but he's just a stream guy. He's not a must-roster player. Um, Matisse Stiebel did his thing, four steals and a block. That is what he brings. He does it every night. I wouldn't be surprised to see Matisse start over Danny Green at some point this year. Not yet. Well, the thick Hogsman, Tobias... Harris. Um, I think I am a TH. T to the H. Yeah, TH for life. Oh, just, yeah, stock standard, 20 and 12. I haven't even talked about him beat. 22, 6 and 5, a steal and a block, just getting business done. Now, for the, the Pelicans, I thought, well, who are they going to start? There's no Zion. Will they start Najee Marshall? Will they start uh, Trey Murphy or, or Ken Murphy, Murphy the third? Now, Trey Murphy, I, I, last time I mentioned this, you are not Trey Murphy the third. Your dad's name is Ken. Your grandpa's name is Ken. Your name is Ken. You are called Trey because you are the third. Your dad is not called Trey Murphy. You are Kenneth Murphy the third, or Trey Murphy, whichever one you want to be. I know it's semantics, but it, I don't know why it bothers me. It just does. Anyway, I thought Trey Murphy could start. But no, it was Josh the Hitman Hart. He played 10 minutes and then had to go off with a knee injury. 
They said x-rays were clean, but it didn't look great. So I'm not adding Josh Hart, even though he started. not worrying about that. Devontae Graham. Good stuff. 18 points, 5 assists, deal on a block. Nice. Ingram was solid. 25, 7, and 6. One Nikhil Alexander-Walker. Obviously must roster Alex. Someone someone before this game said they were going to drop Nikhil Alexander-Walker, and I, I wish I could remember who the absolutely shitful player was that he wanted to add instead of Alexander-Walker. But yeah, 23, 4, four threes, five, uh, 5 points. Kyra Lewis stepped up when Hart went down. 5 and 4 with 5 assists. I still like Kyra long term, but it's not going to impact much this year. But Jonas Valanciunas. Holy shit. Jonas Vasu Inuansas. Imagine a big man shooting 16%. You don't expect that. That will bounce back. 9 and 12 with a block uh, on those 16% uh, shooting. He had 30 usage. He will be better. Najee Marshall didn't come in until Hart went down. He had two points in 20 minutes. I don't know why they didn't play him. It was pretty weird. While Murphy, if you added him in 12 team leagues, the fact that he only played 18 minutes without Hart is one that I'd go, look, I don't think his upside is all that high anyway. You take him with a last round fly, you see what happens, and now you, you just move on. That's it. That's fine. Um, we had a crack at it. We wanted to see how the rotation shook out. But the upside's not high enough to just hold to everything, I don't think. And then 15 absolutely useless minutes of Garrett Temple, which is, I don't know, the, the story of Garrett Temple's career. All right, so I apologize for the volume issue before. When I tried to do the Desmond Bain thing, I knocked the mic and the, the um, cable for the microphone came out. So I apologize where there was some wonky um, sound for like the last eight minutes or so, but we're all fixed now. I only just noticed it, so I was pretty annoyed. But uh, yeah, hopefully we're, we're okay now. So let's go on to the next game. We're looking at the Orlando Magic and the San Antonio Spurs. A huge win for the Spurs. Now, the Magic had some uh, foolishness before the game. They decided they were going to start Gary Harris, which is fine. That's no worries. They also decided they were going to start Franz Wagner and bring Jalen Suggs off the bench. Oh, we want to bring Jalen off the bench because he missed time with a stomach illness in preseason. All right, it's a bullshit excuse, but whatever. It's fine. And then, you know, 20 minutes before the game, 15 minutes before the game, actually, guys, Gary Harris is out due to hamstring maintenance. Not soreness, not tightness, not a strain. Maintenance. What does that mean? Regardless. And then, now we're going to start Jalen Suggs. So, this is my problem with it. It's not that you've got to protect Gary Harris's hamstrings or we, don't, we need to take that risk with them, whatever. If Jalen Suggs, you know, was so fatigued from his stomach illness, what changed? Why did Gary Harris going out meant that now he wasn't fatigued to go into the starting lineup? You could have started Terrence Ross. You could have started RJ Hampton. You didn't have to start Jalen Suggs. So the reason for him not being in the starting lineup because of, um, you know, his poor little tummy was a complete crock of shit. Just say you, you, you didn't want to start him, whatever it was. But don't give me this bullshit when it's proven false 20 minutes later. Um, Mo Bamba. One, two, three, four, five. Whoo, 27 minutes. 18, four, and four. One steal, four blocks. Obviously, must roster. We knew they were going to start him and Wendell Carter as soon as Chuma Akiki was out. I don't know how long Akiki's going to be before he comes back. But there's some really, really good value there. Even um, Wendell himself. Now, Wendell only played 19 minutes, which is concerning. 13 and eight with a steal and a three. As I've said a million times, I think Wendell's a better player than Bumba. I'm not so sure about it anymore, but I definitely know that if they play the same minutes, Bumba's by far the better fantasy guy. So Bumba is a must-roster guy. Wagner, 32 minutes for France. This is why I liked him as a prospect, just contributing across the board. Now, he looked bad in summer league and bad in preseason. 12-4, and four, two assists, one steal, and two blocks is really good. I'll keep an eye on him. I'll add him in like 16-teamers. I might do it in 14. I probably won't. But it, the problem is that once Akiki and then Isaac and then Harris is back, will they still play him 32 minutes? Yeah, I'm not sure. But that was encouraging. 15 points in 27 minutes for Ross, while uh, RJ had 6 points in 26. And it was pretty rough for both Cole Anthony and Jalen Suggs. 10, 5, and 4 for Anthony in 30 minutes is bad. 10, 1, and 1 for Suggs is worse. I would still hold both of them in 12-team leagues. Now, Anthony's available everywhere. Now, I think getting a starting point guard playing 30 minutes a night for the short term is absolutely worth having. But he wasn't particularly inspiring. And I do think that if I was the Magic and I was Jamal Mosley, he's the one that gets the ass for Gary Harris to return to the starting lineup, not Jalen Sykes. We will see how he approaches it, though. And if Anthony does move to the bench, then I wouldn't bother with him in 12 teamers. For the Spurs, ah, oh, my guy, Devin Vassell. 25 minutes, 19 points, three threes, five assists, two steals. Add him in all 14 team leagues. Um, if he's going to play these minutes, 
then there is an opportunity for 12-team value. How did he get these, these minutes? Well, they limited Doug McDermott. Good. And they didn't play Thad Young. Now, you know I've had skepticism about Thad Young. Were they going to trade him? Were they going to cut him? I didn't think they'd just flat out not play him. Thad Young, drop him. Right, drop him. There's no, if he's, they're not going to play him, drop him. I'm confused by it. But there was always... Remember how they just didn't announce him at all? Uh, after the trade, they didn't, I thought, oh, they're just going to get rid of him. And then they played him in preseason. I went, ah, oh, that's weird. Now they're not playing him. Hmm. Keldon Johnson did his usual bullshit of scoring 15 points while only going 50% from the line, but doing nothing else. This is why I don't like him for category leagues. You can hold him, sure. But he's not that good. 15, 4, and 1, no threes, no steals, no blocks, while Maximum Derek had 16, 4, and 4 better hit the noise. Maximum Derek. And DeJounte Murray had 15, 6, and 8 with 4 steals. Poor shooting for him. Poor shooting for Lonnie Walker, but at least he got some nice volume in there, Lonnie. 17 in 25 minutes. How the Lonnie Walker, Devin Vassell minutes go is still up in the air. And it's hard to judge everything with this Spurs game just because of how much of an ass kicking it was. On another positive note, Jakob Pertl. 12 points, 13 rebounds, 7 assists, and he didn't take any free throws. 75 from the line. Excellent stuff from Pertl. I thought he could have a really big season. This exceeds expectations, getting those assists. No blocks is a little bit disappointing. But overall, just a huge, huge night from the Spurs, which is obviously awesome for them and their fans. All right, let's go on to the next game. We're looking at the uh, Oklahoma City Thunder and the Utah Jazz. A pretty big blowout here for the Thunder. Sorry, for the Jazz, 107-86. Darius Baisley, flashing a little bit there. 15 and 7 in 30 minutes, but yeah, poor efficiency. Low steals, no blocks. I don't love him as a 12-team league guy. Well, Trey Mann flashed a little bit as well. Nine points in 15 minutes. Playing over Ty Jerome was a surprise. So deeper leagues will want to pay attention there. Isaiah Roby only played 14 minutes, while well, Derek Favors played 20. That's a little bit disappointing, while well, Jeremiah Robinson Earl played 13. Um, again, Roby was a last-round pickup. You want to drop him? Drop him. Josh Giddy scored only four points, but he had 10 rebounds and three assists. Still obviously persisting, but it wasn't great. While well, Shea was a little bit uh, off. No defensive stats, 18-4 and 2 on poor efficiency. It's really hard going up against the Utah Jazz, so I'm not going to ding them too much there. Well, Lou Dort, he's just, look, he's just going to be... Um, a bad shooter. It's simple as it's what he is. No, my son is also named Bort. Dort is a fine points league player and he has no business being rostered in a category league 12 team. He had seven and six on 20% shooting. The two steals are nice, but there are so many better other options out there for 12 team formats than him. Pokyashevsky was dreadful. Zero points in 15 minutes. Yeah, if I've got him or Roby, I'd persist with Poku. But there's no guarantee he will be a 12-team league guy. I'd give him a little bit of extra rope, though. While for the Jazz, it was easy enough for them. Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert. 16-21 and 21 with a block is great. Bogdanovich shot well, 22 points. Don Mitchell had 16-3-4 and four with two steals on poor shooting. Ingles had 14 Jordan Clarkson played 27 minutes. J-O-R-D-A-N-C-L-A-R-K-S-O-N. 18 points with nothing else. I think he's just a fringe guy. I think he gets overrated a little bit. Well, this is not much else to talk about here. 10 points for Conley with four assists. O'Neal went scoreless on 0-4 shooting. It's just the most stock standard Jazz box score you could get. Now, of course, we do have an addition to the Jazz this year. Your mate. The word. Hassan Whiteside. Did what he can do, I guess. 10 rebounds and a steal and two blocks. That's useful for streaming nights. We're not adding him in 12-team leagues or anything, but 16-team is sure. There is enough there with that rebound and those block numbers to have uh, a little bit of value for Hassan Whiteside. All right, so let's go on to the next game. We are looking at the Denver Nuggets here and the Phoenix Suns. The Nuggets get the win on the road. 110-99. Big Chungus. Nikola Jokic. He was at his best. 27 and 13. Only two assists, though. That's a little bit disappointing. Two steals. Um, no free throw attempts either, but yeah, good line overall. And Will Barton. Yeah, when I talked at the start about why I don't know why people were dropping Will Barton, that was before this game had finished. Um, 20 points, four triples, six rebounds, five assists. He's a must roster player. If someone dropped him, go and add him. Maga Porter Jr. drops in 15, 6, and 5 with two steals. While Aaron Gordon, a pretty good game for Gordon. I don't think he's necessarily must roster 12 team, but 12, 8, and 4 is solid. Still only 29 minutes. They always seem to keep his minutes lower than the other starters. 
They did start Monty Morris. He's not worth it in a 12-team league, I don't think. Nine points in 28 minutes. Well, Jeff Green had 13. PJ Dozier had 10 in 21 minutes. And unfortunately, we didn't get Bones Highland. That's annoying. We got eight useless minutes of Austin Rivers, though, so I guess that's good. Obviously, Highland is not a 12-team league player. We can uh, we can move on from him pretty comfortably, but it is still frustrating nonetheless to um, to not see Bones out there after everything that he did in the preseason, after all the talk that Malone gave him, um, to not see him out there is, is pretty frustrating. Campazzo had just four assists and two steals in his uh, 20 minutes, but again, that's not a 12-team league sort of line. The Suns were sluggish for sure. Chris Paul had 15, 4, and 10 with two steals and a block. Good. DeAndre Aiden started out well, but yeah, again, it's just yeah. 15 and 6 in 33 minutes, while Booker was also a little bit, actually not a little bit, a lot disappointing. 12 points on 20% shooting with four assists, and Landry Shaman had 11 points in 19 minutes. Um, I think it's coaching malpractice to give Landry Shamit minutes over Cameron Payne, but that's what happened. We had 19 minutes of Shamit and 14 of Payne, while Bridges struggled his way through to 16 and 5. Now, encouragingly, they did give more usage to Mikhail Bridges, but he didn't perform particularly well. Well, Jay Crowder. Uh, Jay Crowder, where's my thing? Sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be shit. Two points on 0 of 5 shooting. He'll probably drop 15 points on 5 of 5 shooting next game. Um, but this is just what he does. Well, Cam Johnson had 11 points in three threes. I'd be trying to see if I can get Cam Johnson in the starting lineup if I am the Suns. I just don't really expect them to do that at any time coming up here soon, unfortunately. All right, so let's move on to the last game of the night. The Sacramento Kings and the old... Uh, who are they? The Portland Trailblazers. Yeah, that's the name of the team that I was trying to find out. In the end... The Kings get the win, 124-121. The Blazers did come back late in this one. Let's look at the Kings side of things. The pencil, Harrison Barnes. Barnesy. That's just a monster. 36 points, 8 triples, 9 rebounds, 2 assists, 2 steals. Massive usage, high efficiency, really good stuff from Barnes, who's carrying on his good form from last year. While Rashawn Holmes, unfortunately, only played 29 minutes, but who cares? 21-11 with 2 blocks on 90% shooting, unreal. Darren Fox, still the free throws. 70% on 10 attempts hurts you. And then 41 from the field. But 27-5 and 8 is strong. Well, Budrick Hill did come off the bench. He played 31 minutes and had 17-6 and six with four triples. And that's all right. I'm a bit disappointed. Actually, I'm a lot disappointed in Tyrese Halliburton. 2-2-4 two, two, and four in 29 minutes. Don't make any panic move. While Davion Mitchell did get 24 minutes. But there are a lot of people here who think he's a 12-team league guy. Jack Armstrong, he's got something to say about it. Get that garbage out! There's just not enough opportunity for him to be a 12-team league guy. Move on. There are better guys out there, I believe. Tristan Thompson, we saw get 19 backup minutes while Mo Harkless started and had seven points. These aren't guys that you need to really care about. They only went with a nine-man rotation. So no Alex Len, no Marvin Bagley, of course, no Chemezi Metu. Um, and yeah, backup power forward, we're just running a lot of small guys out there. So it was a very interesting uh, rotation from Luke Walton, but they get the win on the road. Now in Portland, CJ McCollum had 34 points, five assists, three steals, six triples, a great game. Well, how about, oh yeah, should we do it? Let's go. No question about it. I am ready to get hurt again. I, for one, am not shocked that Yusuf Nurkic is fucking good. Like, I'm just not shocked. Do I expect him to continue to be this good? The 29 minutes is annoying. He did have four fouls, but 20 and 14 with a block. On 7 of 7 from the line and 60% from the field. I expect both those percentages to drop, but he's really good. And I took the plunge again this year, and it worked out. Fingers crossed he stays healthy. Lillard had 20 points and 11 assists, while Covington was disappointed. We know this, what Covington does. He had two blocks. He hit two threes. He shot poorly. He will do this. Um, Storm and Norman Powell was rough. 14 and 5. I can envisage a scenario where Powell does not become a rosterable 12-team league guy. The reason he's had so much value of late is being like a 50-plus percent guy on decent volume. And if he can't maintain that in Portland's system, then there's no use for him because he doesn't do anything in those other categories. While Simons had 11 points in 18 minutes and 19 minutes for Cody Zeller was probably a few too many. Larry Nance, I was worried about how they were using him in the preseason. That worry has not uh, dissipated. 17 minutes, two points. I It depends who you're adding, but yeah, the upside for him needs 30 minutes. He's never getting that outside of injury. If you do want to move on from Larry Nance, it's not going to be the, the you know, if you've got Larry Nance and Davion Mitchell, you're dropping Davion Mitchell. Like, that's not really that much of a decision. But if, if Mo Bumba's available and you've got Larry Nance, it's an easy-ass switch. So just don't look at Nance, I don't think, as a guaranteed must-hold play. He will definitely be better than this. 
but that doesn't mean that he has to be held onto in all situations. Let's go now have a look at the top performers for the day. When we start with number one, Jalen Brown. He was amazing, amazing. Julius Randle was number two. Towns was three. Zach Levine at four. Lamelo Ball at five. In fact, you could even say that Jalen Brown was maybe the monstrous line of the night. Um, Bolt Ball at five. Harrison Barnes at six. Evan Fournier at seven. The disease screwed him. Malcolm Brogdon at eight. Robert Williams at nine. And Ja Morant at 10. Williams, Brogdon, um, Randall, and Brown all getting this done on gigantic minutes, 40 plus minutes. So just be aware of that, that those minutes did jump those guys up uh, as high as they ended up on this list. These guys are rostered in under 50% of advanced leagues and they are the top 10 performance. Chris Duarte, I think he's a 12-team league ad, at least for the short term. I don't believe that for Korkmaz, who is next. Devin Vassell's a 14-team speculation. Grant Williams, similarly, while Horford's out, a 14-team option. Rubio's got some value in 12s. I do like Desmond Bain in 12-team leagues. Lonnie Walker scored 17 points, but was inefficient. Yeah, that's more 16 to 18-team scenario. Denny Avdia and Franz Wagner. Similar games, those two guys. Um, I like Wagner more than Avdia if I'm taking a flyer on someone, but it's more for deeper formats. And then Hassan Whiteside as a block streamer, he's the 10th guy on that list. And then lastly, we look at the top 10 players in a points league. Jalen Brown, Julius Randle, the diseased scrotum of Anne Fournier, Ja Morant, the rock DJ Robbie Williams, LaMelo Ball, Carl Anthony Towns, Harrison Barnes, Zach Levine, and Malcolm Brogdon. Guys, that will do it for me today. A lot to take in. Be careful of silly moves. But there are some guys you can definitely move on for. Grab the right guys. Good luck in your matchups. I hope they're going well. Good luck for tomorrow. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up on this video. Leave a comment down below. Again, apologies for that microphone kerfuffle uh, in that uh, little eight-minute period whenever it was. Do apologize for that. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.